Hey, Scarlett, I really don't think we ought to cook today. You know, it's pretty breezy and I don't want to burn nothing. That's a good point, Scarlett, but let's ask Rhett. Ray, Rhett, what do you think? Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Whoa, Rhett, I don't think we ought to get upset about it. You know, but it might be windy tomorrow, too, and my gosh, I'm starving to death. I'm going to live through this, and when it's all over, I'll never be hungry again. Oh my gosh, Scarlett. Okay, we'll cook something today. I'm sorry. <laughs> These guys are so dramatic, but stick around. I'll give you some tips for cooking in the wind. <laughs> It's a little breezy as you can see. I don't got my hairnet on, but I do have my cowboy helmet on. Expecting a little hail tonight and a little everything else. So I got my friend Mike the Mouse in my pocket. He will help me today. Maybe y'all can hear all this and not get all that wind. Of all the conditions I've cooked in my entire life, the thing that I hate to cook in the most, what you're hearing, good old wind down here south of Seymour, Texas. The more it blows, the worse it gets. You better stay tuned. I'm going to show you the, how to corral this wind to where we can cook something. You can see we laid them coals around there. Now, if it wasn't windy, that'd be a pretty good place to put them. But it's breezy, about 25 anyway. So we're going to rake them out here a pretty good distance from this Dutch oven. You don't want it right under there today, I promise you. In the wind like this, you want to make sure, as you've seen me do, pull them coals pretty good distance from that Dutch oven, away from it, all the way. We want a good round circle, lighter coals though, not near as heavy as what it'd be if there wasn't no wind blowing, and pretty light on top. When we're cooking in the wind like this, we're going to rotate more often. Now, if it wasn't windy, I'd say maybe three to four minutes in, I'd rotate the bottom one way, top the other. But I'm gonna do this about every minute and a half. Sure, you ain't got time to sit down and take a nap when you're cooking in the wind. You're gonna to have to rotate this top one way, bottom the other, because we have such a heat fluctuation everywhere around it with this wind blowing. So we're on a tall trivet. That is this one, about five and a half inches, not this short one. Now, we got bread in here, but if you was cooking dessert, pies, cakes, brownies, something like that, we would be on this tall trivet and them coals are right where they're at. But if we're doing a baked potato or something like that, sure, I'm gonna be a little closer to it, even in the wind, cause it's not as apt to get to burn something if you're baking a potato versus trying to bake a bread or a dessert. But most of the time, folks, you're gonna wanna use this tall trivet out here cooking in the wind. That way you're giving you more space, a heat buffer, cause this wind is gonna make things like a microwave if you ain't paying attention. Now y'all have heard me say in the past before, if you can hold it more than five seconds, it ain't hot enough. I guarantee you this is hot enough. But these coals on top with that wind blowing like it is, you can see them glowing. They're gonna ash out a little quicker than they normally would. So always check that heat all the way around, windy or not, but in the wind, it's gonna be more of a factor. Now one other way that you can help yourself cooking in the wind, get yourself a windshield. Not the one out of the pickup. Don't take the hammer over and try to break it out and bring it over here. I'm talking about a portable windshield. I just happen to have one today. Now this old table is plastic and I use it for a lot of things, but I covered it with sheet metal. There you go, folks. Now I'm gonna tell you something. A lot of you be wanting to move it right up here, don't you? Got that good wind break. But guess what's happening right here? Heat reflecting off of this coming back down. You twice as hot now. We're going to keep it back here a pretty good distance. I'd say nearly two foot from this, just enough to keep us some wind. You're still going to get a swirl around, but if you've got one you want to make a wind break that's got hinges on it and bring it out here, it's confined in here like this. You're making a lot of radiant heat it's hotter than any convection oven in the house when the wind's blowing, I promise you. Another tip I got for cooking in the wind, and that's a wash tub. Now you take this old wash tub that we use to wash dishes in or anything else like that, it's a wind barrier. So we're gonna take a trivet, set in there, then we're gonna put a Dutch oven in there, put coals around it, we're out of the wind. But something you gotta remember too, when you enclose something like that and you've got a surface around it, 
you're radiating heat. I really don't like to use it that way because something is going to get hot in a hurry. Now I have seen people that just cut a wash tub in half and that way you can move it around wherever the wind is going. It's not quite as bad, but you're still getting that reflectivity from heat back off something metal that shines back on it. So it's going to be hotter, I promise. Now folks, y'all seen me do it. I don't recommend that you go out there next time it's coming a tornado or a hurricane and try to prove something to your neighbor that you can cook in the wind. I'm just telling you, you got a 20 mile an hour breeze in your country and you think, well, I can't cook today. Go out there in the backyard, you got a spot, you can do it. Be careful, I hope these tips help. We thank y'all for stopping by camp. We hope that you fare well. God bless you each and every one.